Welcome to the Platinum Curve Stairlift installation video. This video has been produced by Platinum Stairlifts to help show you how to install your stairlift correctly. Throughout the video we will show you how to fit the power supply and wall controls as well as the truck installation and the preparation of the carriage and chair. It will also show you how to safely mount and program the carriage along with a series of basic checks to ensure the safe installation and easy use of a Platinum Curve stairlift. We will also give you a series of handy tips that will not only make the installation easy for you, they will also help to minimise any faults and reduce potential call-outs in the future. Chapter 1. Pre-installation check. Upon arrival on site to begin the installation of the stair lift, fully check and compare the staircase to the drawing provided in your installation kit. Ensure that you check the staircase thoroughly for any noticeable obstructions such as bulkheads, windowsills, dado rails or handrails whether they are indicated on the drawing or not. Check to find the most suitable location for the power supply, ideally at the bottom of the stairs. Chapter 2 – Unpacking of the Rails and Installation Kit Before you start installing the stair lift, remove all of the contents from the installation kit and check everything against the drawing and the kit inventory. Your installation kit should include all of the following items. Ensure that you have all the necessary tools in order to complete the installation. You will require all of the following. After checking that your installation kit is complete, safely remove all of the protective wrapping from each track section, taking care not to mark any of the paintwork underneath. Identify each of the track sections accordingly, using the identification tags provided, ensuring that the number one rail starts with the bottom section. Handy tip! Firstly clarify with your customer with regard to any underfloor heating, alarm wires, pads or pipe work that may affect or hinder the installation before you begin. Chapter 3 – Installing the Power Supply and Wall Controls Firstly, predetermine the most suitable position for the charger next to the power supply. Once you've identified this, mark out and pre-drill the holes in order to fix the charger mounting bracket onto the wall. Fit the plug to the charger and also any trunking that may be required in order to hide the charging cable. Screw the mounting bracket and charger to the wall, plug the charger into the socket leaving the power switched off. Run the charger cable down the trunking and out to the required destination. Handy tip! Should you need to run any wires under or around carpets, it will be easier if you do this before the track is placed onto the stairs. Also remember with the charge wire, the black with white tracer is positive and the black is earth. To mount the wall controls, firstly ensure the holster is level, mark out and pre-drill the fixing holes, screw the holster to the wall, mount the directional sticker to the control unit and place this into the holster. Make sure both 9 volt batteries have also been fitted into the remote. Chapter 4 – Installing the Track Take all of your leg bases and screw the three 8mm grub screws into each leg base, ensuring that none of the grub screws protrude into the inside of the leg. Check the leg base positions with your installation drawing and place leg base onto the required steps as indicated. 
Starting with the top rail section and working down, place each section onto the steps and then into the leg bases. Be careful to gently rest the sections into each leg base in a freestanding position. This will make feeding the two core charging cable through each rail section much easier. Carefully feed the charging cable through the bottom tube of each rail section from the top down to the bottom, noting if any intermediate charging points are required. Ensure there is enough cable pulled through to the bottom of the rail to reach the power charging point. Using a small magnetic spirit level as a guide, level each section of rail by gently tightening the grub screw on each leg base as required. From the bottom section upwards, join the first two sections together, ensuring that each of the joints have been greased. Whilst doing this, be careful not to trap the charging wire. Working upwards, repeat this joining process for all of the other rail sections until the rail is fully assembled and level. Once the full rail is placed together, remove any excess grease from around each of the joints. When you are happy with the positioning of the rail, pin each track section together using the 6mm joining bolts. Take care not to trap or damage the charging cable inside the rail. Leave each of the pins proud by approximately 2mm, then gently knock them home using the pin punch. Level the rail sections on both sides, undo the grub screws in each leg base, and then re-tighten when the rail is level. Repeat this process for all of the other sections until the rail is completely level and fully assembled. Once fully assembled, double check all the levels around the rail and according to your drawing, check all of the clearances. Firstly, check the clearance from the steps, then the clearance from the walls. Once all clearances are acceptable, loosen all of the grub screws in the leg bases in order to allow you to screw down and securely fix each base accordingly. This will ensure that the track is not pulled out of level. Before you begin screwing down each leg base, double check that each base is parallel to each step. When all the leg bases have been secured, re-tighten all of the grub screws to hold the leg base in position. Repeat this process for each leg base until they are all securely fixed and in position. Finally, insert the plastic bungs into the top of the legs after all leg bases have been fixed. Handy tip! If all the clearances are not correct according to your drawing, make sure the grub screws are tight, then mount the carriage onto the track and run it along the rail to make sure that it clears everywhere prior to screwing the track down. Chapter 5. Mounting the carriage onto the rail. Remove the carriage and the chair from the packaging and carry the chair to the top of the staircase. Leave the carriage at the foot of the stairs as there is normally more space here, enabling you to work on the carriage freely. In order to install the batteries and radio frequency unit, remove both of the protective side covers from the carriage, followed by the front cover. Place the plain rubber pad into the base of the battery compartment, followed by the first battery on top, ensuring that the terminal is facing up. Place the second rubber pad on top of the first battery with the raised lip facing upwards. Insert the second battery on top with the terminals facing down. Ensuring the lift is switched off, connect the battery cables and then the inline fuse. Secure the inline fuse behind the elastic battery cable. To install the radio frequency unit, remove it from the protective packaging. From the opposite side of the carriage to the battery compartment, remove both of the green plugs into the bottom of the PCB. Now connect the radio frequency unit as follows. Blue onto call up, white onto feed, and brown onto call down. Then connect the red and black cables, red onto 24 volt out, black onto ground. Reconnect the green plugs to the PCB and secure the radio frequency unit inside the carriage. Replace the front cover along with the left side cover for the battery compartment. Now take the carriage to the top of the stairs in order to begin mounting it to the rail. Feed the excess charging cable out through the pre-drilled hole at the top of the rail. This allows you to later fix the cable to the charging point. To load the carriage, firstly insert the small, white, tapered loading plug into the bottom tube of the rail, followed by the larger loading bar, which is inserted into the top roller tube of the carriage. 
Now carefully lift the carriage using the loading bar and insert the bar into the top tube. Then, using the white loading plug as a guide, place the bottom roller tube over the loading plug and gently lower the carriage onto the rail. This will help to mount the carriage easily into both rails. Next, you need to hand wind the carriage onto the rail correctly. Before you begin this, ensure the isolator switch is off. Insert the hand winder into the front of the carriage and turn until a loud click is heard. Hand wind the carriage down the rail for approximately 30 millimeters or one and a half inches. In order to fix the chair to the carriage, remove the chair fixing screws from the top of the carriage, leaving the spacer in place. Carefully place the chair on top of the carriage, feeding both cables through the center hole on the base of the swivel. Ensure no cables are trapped and that the holes on the spacer and swivel are correctly aligned. Now, screw the four bolts back into the swivel and firmly secure the chair in place. Whilst the cover is removed, check that the swivel is working correctly by pulling the levers in an upward direction. Ensure the swivel operation is moving freely and is easy to use, along with the swivel switch itself. Check that all cables are secure and free from being caught before you attach the plastic protective cover. Insert the four plastic grommets to fix the swivel cover into position. Finally, raise the chair arm and insert the key into the key switch. Turn the key in a clockwise direction until it stops in a diagonal position. Chapter 6. Mounting the end stops Before mounting the end stops, move the carriage to each end of the rail to determine the end stop positions at both the bottom and top of the rail. Once you are happy with your end stop positioning, drill the bottom tube for each end stop, ensuring not to drill through the charging cable and fix them both into place. Connect the black and white cable from the charger to the live wire in the charging cable, then connect the plain black wire from the charger with the blue or neutral. Now, attach the red rubber charging clamps to both wires and feed them through and attach them to the charging point. making sure to attach each wire safely and correctly. Repeat this process at the other end of the rail by attaching the internal charging cable with the second charging point. When you are happy with all the wiring connections that have been made, simply turn on the power supply and check that the carriage charges correctly, both at the top and bottom charging points. When the stair lift is on charge, the display will read Platinum. Handy tip! Make sure that the carriage charge pin runs onto the charge ramp sufficiently in order that the connection remains while sat in the chair, getting in and out of the chair, and when the chair is swiveled round. These simple checks will save time and avoid potential future callouts. Chapter 7. Programming the stair lift. In order to begin programming the stair lift, run the carriage all the way to the bottom end stop and onto its charging point. Switch the charger on and, as mentioned previously, check the display reads Platinum and indicates that the stair lift is charging. Remove the right side cover of the carriage to access the PCB. Press the red menu button on the right hand side of the circuit board for approximately 8 seconds. The word program will appear on the display along with an S in the bottom right hand corner. This S stands for slow speed. Next, run the carriage approximately 200 millimeters or 8 inches away from the end stop. Again on the PCB, press the red adjust button once. This is the button to the left of the two. Once pressed, the S on the display will change to F for fast speed. Now, run the carriage to the top of the rail, stopping again approximately 200 millimeters or 8 inches from the end stop. Press the adjust button once again and the F will change back to an S, indicating slow speed once again. Finally, run the carriage all the way to the top end stop and check that the display goes on to charge. The carriage is now fully programmed. Handy tip! The lift can be set to run fast or slow at any time during its travel. Use this knowledge and set the travel of the lift to your customer's requirements. For example, slow it down around corners or overloopers if these are the areas of the track that your customer feels least comprehensive about. And remember to always slow the carriage down as it's coming to a halt for a smoother finish. 
Chapter 8. Checking the safety features Move the carriage to a suitable position on the staircase in order to fully test all of the safety features. Firstly check that all downside safety edges are working correctly. These consist of the top and bottom skates, side cover and footrest. Now, repeat these safety checks once again, checking that all of the equivalent upside safety edges are also working correctly. Ensure that the safety circuit switches are working by checking that the swivel safety switch activates when swiveled. Also, check that the key switch safety feature is working. Finally, test the overrun switch by pushing the charge pin in to its maximum. Chapter 9. Cleanup Before you commence the handover to the customer, make a point of clearing away all tools and any remaining kits along with the removal of any packaging that may still be lying around. It's also vital that you thoroughly vacuum everywhere, leaving the customer's house exactly how you found it prior to the installation. As the majority of your customers will be elderly people, please ensure that they do not have to tidy up anything after you've left their home. Chapter 10. The Customer Handover Upon completion of the installation, firstly complete the installation test certificate if this is required or requested. Ensure that you've fully demonstrated all aspects of the stairlift and its operation to the customer. This includes showing how to secure and fasten the safety belt, how the directional joystick is operated, pointing out all of the notifications on the diagnostic display, where the power charger is located and how to operate it, as well as how to switch the stairlift on and off. Finally, sign off all your required paperwork as necessary. Your Platinum Curve stairlift has now successfully been installed.